Well, you can't even see it. I feel like you guys are really low. I put you guys on my amp this time. Nah. Uh, in the mirror, it looks okay, but I just feel like I'm looking down on all of you, you know? Dang, my hair's getting nuts. I think I'm gonna grow it out till like March, and then we'll see. We'll see what it looks like then. Then maybe I'll cut it. Maybe I won't. But anyway, what's up, guys? Den Den VMX here. I don't know if you know this, but there's this guy named Jeff Bezos. He's got this company that's kind of big. It's called Amazon. And um, I don't know if you guys knew this, but they actually sell balisongs there. I know that is not very readily available information, but you learn something new every day, don't you? But it's funny you mention that, myself, because that's what we're going to be looking at today. Today we are going to be unboxing and reviewing... Ow! God, that's scary. I feel like I'm going to just drop it on my head. I would have stabbed myself if that was a real knife. But uh, today we're going to be looking at... The Nabali's trainer. Now some of you are probably gonna be like, Denny, you stupid bitch. Everyone already knows about the Nabali's Amazon trainers and everyone knows that they're pretty good. Well, guess what? I haven't seen anybody make a video about the brand new designs of the G10 that they have come out with. So I'm capitalizing on that because I also wanted to try out one of these. And let's be real, this design looks a lot better than the one that they've had out for a while. So today we are gonna be unboxing and checking out the Nabali's G10 Parallelogram Balisong trainer that you can get on Amazon for just a mere 20 $7. Really, it's 28 and when you round it up, it should be 30 but we're going to say 27 because I like the number 7. back everyone to the first official review of a new battle song in this new era of Den Den BMX battle song videos. That was probably one of the most pretentious things I've ever said in my life. So now that I've gotten back together with my ex known as battle songs, I've been having quite a bit of fun on YouTube looking at all the other videos people have made about battle songs in my absence and everyone did what every hobby does and went and saw what they could get off Amazon. And a while ago Will Hirsch found that one that was that looks really ugly but it's like a good flipper. But then I started noticing people like battle song flip and Dylan Kowalski start making videos on these Nabali's trainers and everyone's pretty much of the opinion that for the price these are some of the best battle songs you can get. So we're gonna hop into that right after I tell you guys that if you go on to enjoy this video I would really appreciate it if you let me know and help support the engagement on this video by leaving a like, leave a comment, give me your thoughts and opinions, maybe share the video around. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already and you enjoy the content that I put here. And of course, if you really enjoy this channel, maybe even consider joining the channel membership because that is by far the best way to support me. And then last but not least, of course, make sure you follow me on Instagram at DenDenBMX. I am done being a tool. Let's us flash back to two weeks prior and unbox this dang thing. All right, guys, I'm sorry if you can hear the water in the background. I'm purposely flooding my house. Just kidding. Someone's running water back there, but anyway, unfortunately, I have some bad news. You see, due to the fact that I am a massive idiot, I accidentally deleted the video that would have been the unboxing portion of this, but... Luckily, I did save the box and everything that came in it, luckily, so this shouldn't be too much of a loss. So this is the box you get your Nabal sack trainer in. Um, <laughs> as you can see on the barcode there, it says Nabali's G10 New Type Par. Beautiful and practical. Now let's see what lies within this mysterious rectangle. And now when you first open it up, you will get a little card that says Nabali's and it says please read the following precautions for use. Now here is pretty much what it'll look like when you unbox your Nabali's trainer. So you will receive everything that I'm showing you right now. You get the Balisong and underneath the Balisong you have a bunch of these reflective liners that you can add in. I added in the blue one and then this is the latch that it comes with pre-installed and unfortunately in order to turn this thing into a good flipper you are going to have to take off the latch because the latch is just far too heavy and throws off the balance. Now Nabali's does have a very informative video on how to do that. One thing that these Nabali songs come with they actually supply you 
with Threadlocker, which I think is really cool. There's the tools they supply with you, and then they even throw you some spare parts, which is always happily welcome. And now, since this is a $30 battle song from China, I would be very careful with the hardware. Take it slow. You, do, you, you really don't want to strip these, and I feel like these could strip pretty easily. I didn't strip any of mine, but there were a few times where I thought I got pretty close. With this Balasong, in order for it to be a good flipper, you have to take the latch off, like I said, and then if you want to put on these reflective strips, you have to take off the G10 too, so I would recommend all doing that as soon as you open it, and then lock tight everything. That's kind of the caveat for these Nabali's trainers. In order for them to be really good and to actually hold up, there is a little bit of work required. You are going to have to take off the latch to fix the balance, and then you are going to have to lock tight down all these screws to make sure that this thing holds up as long as it should and doesn't fall apart on you right away. And I did try flipping this thing for a little bit before I Loctited it, and those pivots got loose and almost came out. Now, on top of Nabali's providing short little videos to help you take off the latch, they also have short little videos to help you install these little reflective strips and then also install the thread locker. I will put the link for Nabali's YouTube channel in there so that if any of you do end up deciding to purchase this and you do end up needing help, that way you can set it up and get it tuned nice and perfect. And then with thread locker, you have to wait 12 hours for it to properly dry. That way you get the full flipping potential of this ballast hung. Whew. All right, you thickety thoughts. Let's take an up close, up close and cluck. <laughs> Let's break this thing down and get into the specs of this thing. So these Nabali's trainers are sandwich construction ballast hongs. What I'm assuming is just regular steel line with G10 scales. Now these Nabali's trainers, they run on bearings, and this is actually the first Balasong that I've ever flipped that runs on bearings. And now I kind of understand why people might not like bearings over bushings. It feels a lot more different than I thought it would. Um, it's hard for me to explain. You kind of just got to try it for yourself to realize if you like it. This has a tang pin system. Um, I have no idea what kind of steel this is made out of, but it also doesn't really matter because it's not a live blade. <laughs> and one of the more interesting things that I think is a good idea, these Nabali's trainer blades, they're are technically multi-tools. The tip is supposed to be like a little flathead screwdriver. There's slots to fit in some hex heads here. There's a little ruler here on the side. That's about it for the multi-tool side. I think it could be implemented a little bit better and there could be some other little features on this thing. I always really enjoy when a trainer balisong gives the blade some other different kind of purpose, like how BB Barfly does, how they turn the blade into a bottle opener, or how Nabali's is attempting to make this more of like a multi-tool so that even though it's not a live blade, it can still be useful in some aspects. Specs. Another thing that I like what people do with trainers is use a bite handle indicator and this does not have any. I'm assuming this little hole is to let you know that this is supposed to be the safe handle but really it doesn't matter. Both sides look like they could technically be the live blade part so so that is something to keep in mind. This may not be the best trainer to start with if you're hoping to one day upgrade to a live blade but of course the upside to this thing is that it's only $30 and that's when you round up the price. Another thing that I don't particularly enjoy, the blade looks really nice nice on this side, but on this side it's just flat. And I'm assuming they do that to save money, but also so that the ruler side has something flat to lay on, which is, I wish they would just taper it evenly, because this kind of really bothers my OCD, but it's not a huge deal. Another criticism that I see other people have is that these little points throughout the blade, while they aren't sharp when you feel them, when it's bouncing around and bouncing off against your hand, they, they do kind of hurt. <laughs> Another thing that I really enjoy, so that in between the liners and the G10, you can slip in this little reflective strip. It actually does look pretty cool if you're flipping it. Now I have my lights up, so you might be able to see the little reflective effect right now. But if you can't, I'm gonna throw in a clip where you can definitely see it. I really enjoy the white G10 with the blue on the inside. I think that's an awesome look. Maybe a little bit of a teaser of things to come. And now there's like three versions of these Nabali's G10, G10 trainers. There's the original one that everyone initially made videos on, which I think is kind of ugly. <laughs> Recently they released the new Parallelogram G10 design, which I like a lot more. And then they have one more that's kind of just like a straight line. Um, and this G10 they use, while it does feel kind of cheap, it's also really grippy, so I like that. I've been flipping this thing up for about two weeks. I'm not lying. I had it at no play. This thing would not move, but after these two weeks, a little bit of play has developed, and I think that's just the bearings settling in. 
Oh wow, there actually is tap now. <laughs> That's funny, as soon as I make this video, there actually is tap, which is kind of expected. I didn't expect this thing to have perfect tolerances for very long, but I was able to tune this thing quite easily to no play and no tap. I'm pretty sure that I could still be able to tune that out if I really wanted to. I really don't care that much. I don't tune my valleys very often. I'm kind of an old head and I don't really care that much about playing tap. Since we're right here and we're real close, let's do the sound test. I guess I've been doing my sound tests wrong all this time. I'm slowly learning over time that there's like a process. There's steps to the sound test. There's the play and the tap and then there's and then you do that sound test and then you also do this sound test. But anyway, let's finally go into the flipping portion of the video where I give you guys my thoughts and opinions on how this thing flips. All right, dildos and dildettes. How does this $30 Amazon flipper train flip? What? How does this $30 Amazon ballast song flip? Way better than I expected it to. This thing actually, like people aren't kidding. This thing actually is a damn good flipper. Once you get it properly set up and do everything you need to do, it flips really nice for the most part. Twirling feels very good. Aerials are easy to time. They are very consistent. Rollovers feel good. All these little setup tricks and stuff feel good. One of the things that don't feel as good as I wish they did was choker fans. Regular fans are okay. I kind of wish those were a little better on this thing. But that and then choker fanning is kind of like how it is on the BB bar flies where I can do it. I just wish it was a little more fluid, you know? This is one of those battle songs where it feels like I'm kind of forcing the choker fan to go through instead of just letting it kind of do it itself. But as you can see, it is very possible to do it. Scissors are pretty good. Scissors feel a lot better. Fun fact, I've been doing scissors wrong for like eight years. Let me see if I can show you guys how I used to do scissors. So I used to do like this little twirl thing. And then I would catch it like that. I'm trying to see if I can get a good one still. Yeah, I used to do that. That was my scissor. And then I tried to learn them the proper way, but instead of sticking my index finger out to catch and like kind of loop it up, that way it makes it real easy for double scissors. I would do that, which is a subtle difference, but it is not this kind of scissor that everyone else does. It only took me almost 10 years, but I finally figured out how to scissor properly. I think I made scissors harder on myself because I learned them wrong twice. So there's the like twirly way where it's like going forward, which is a really weird kind of scissor. And then there's the one, it's like a scissor, but I'm catching it wrong. That's why my double scissors always look so ugly because what I'm doing is I'm letting it just like fall right there and then catching it when you're really supposed to stick your index finger out and like scoop it up. As you can see, I've watched Will Hirsch's little um, snap parabolic tutorial. And that's now one of my favorite tricks. That's another thing, ladders feel pretty good on this. Since it's pretty handle heavy, it carries the momentum on ladders pretty well. It is a little, it's like borderline too handle heavy, which is also a factor in why this thing doesn't fan very well. It's not like it's impossible to fan on it. It is and it can fan pretty good, it just doesn't feel as good as I wish it did, if that makes sense. And that's probably my one biggest flipping criticism because I love fans. Like with my Atropos, my Atropos spoiled me with choker fans because Atropos's tie channel design is almost a complete cylinder with just the flat spots on the top. So fans and choker fans on this are like effortless. It feels so good. It just wants to spin. It's like it does the work for you almost. But when you get a handle design that's definitively more square or rectangular, that's when fans can get a little wonky. And that's when it's like a full, like definitive edge square design. Like Replicant's G10 is kind of rounded a little bit. For like an Alpha Beast, the handles are square, but they, they make little triangular cuts in it so that it still wants to spin through your fingers pretty fluidly. But if I was to rate this on how it flipped, all things considered, I'd probably give it a good seven, 7.5 out of 10. There's just some things that I wish it did better, but it's also $30. It's, this thing is a fantastic flipper for $30. Now, let's go wrap up this video and give you guys my final thoughts. All right, class, as we've learned today, this thing sucks. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs>
all things considered, this is a pretty dang good product for just 30 bucks. There is some maintenance and a little bit of modding, so to speak, in order to turn this thing into a good flipper. So if you're willing to do a little bit of work, I would highly recommend this thing. And I believe there's also a couple other Amazon trainers that aren't half bad, but, but for the first one that I've tried, I'm pretty dang impressed. A couple of mild improvements could really turn this thing into a menace of a beginner flipper. Like if you make a latchless version, maybe it has Zen pins so it's a little more durable. I think for the price, bearings are perfectly fine for this thing. But then if you're gonna do a latchless, then you can make it real clean and make a spacer here in the back that covers up the end so it's nice and flush. And maybe make the spacer out of aluminum or, or a smaller piece of steel to maybe balance it out a little bit better. Work on this blade a little bit, maybe get it a little more symmetrical so my AC, DC. <laughs> So my OCD isn't having an aneurysm. I think the multi-tool idea is a good idea. It could just be implemented a little bit better. And then also these, all these little points, they kind of hurt when you're flipping. Maybe try and design them to where they aren't gonna thwack you. For starters, you could probably move one of these just like right there and there'd be your bite handle indicator. Just some of my thoughts on how to improve this design that's already doing pretty dang good. That is one thing that I forgot to mention. Since this thing does run on tank pins and it is only 30 bucks, these tank pins can only be so strong. And yes, there are a couple on mine that are already smushing in. However, I have not noticed any major decrease in handle gap so far. I have only had this thing for two weeks, but people like Ballast on Flipping have said these things can last quite a while if you take care of them. If you're like a manic child and you want to get something and you want it to be able to flip it right away, maybe consider getting a Squiddy or even a BB Barfly. But if you're willing to do a little bit of work on it and you're going to take care of this thing, this thing will treat you pretty dang well and will be a pretty swell introduction to the beautiful art known as Ballad song flipping. Sounds like the easy way out, but since I gave the flipping a seven out of 10, I think I'd give the rest of the knife also a seven out of 10. For the price and for how accessible it is, this thing is a damn good flipper and a great option. As long as you're okay with the prerequisite that it will need a little bit of work in order to turn it into a good flipper. But it's also customizable. It comes with everything you need to work on it, which is nice. This isn't a sponsored or paid review. I bought this thing with my own money. This thing is a pretty damn good flipper all things considered. And yes, as long as you are willing to do the work you'll need to do to turn it into a good flipper, I would recommend it. But that is gonna wrap up today's video. So thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far. Once again, I really hope you enjoyed. And if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you let me know, help support the engagement on this video. Leave a like, leave a comment, give me your thoughts and opinions, maybe share the video around. If you enjoy the content that I put out, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell notification. If you really like this channel, maybe consider joining a membership because that is hands down the best way to support me. Follow me on Instagram at dentedbmx. Once again, thank you guys very much for watching. I will see you guys next time.